the record room where all my magic happens, where the magic happens, like on Cribs. When they always show you the bedroom and they have the bed, this is where the magic happens, right here. Yo, what's up? This is J-Rock, Beat Junkie Crew, right here, Crate Diggers, you know what time it is. Maybe 70, 50, 60, 70. I don't know, yeah. I wish I knew how many records I had. I used to count them as a little kid. Like some of my records have 00163 or like, you know, like I used to try to count them, but yeah, I wish I knew how many records I had because then it would make my life e easier. <laughs> that brown thing's all behind those records. Those three things are records I haven't listened to. Those are records I haven't listened to. This is all Brazil shit I haven't listened to. You guys caught me on an unorganized day, so. This is all jazz and rock. And then I think down on the bottom is foreign. Yeah, this is like groups you're not gonna find in the US. Mrs. Beasley. Dr. Aftershave and the Mix Pickles. <laughs> but the illest shit ever. This is just my reggae and my library records and my comps. And this is all rock. You know, my kitty records. Gotta have your Sesame Street records. Hip hop, all 80s hip hop, 90s, and then after 90s, it goes into 2000s, which is a very small section. All West Coast 80s, and it goes into West Coast 90s. Same thing for that. Then it goes into electro, like Fast Beat of Planet Rock, Nucleus, Juan Atkins, Cybertron. From here down is R&B, Motown, Michael Urbaniak, with something you'll never f***ing see. Gospel, James Brown, Alph alphabetized. On top, that's all Dilla samples. Africa records, Ethiopian. Got Indian soundtracks for days cracking. House, kraut rock, prog rock stuff, and Latin. I, like, I buy records everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, Japan digging is awesome. Japanese, Jackson 5 for you. But they, this one, this album they're doing Osmonds. Finger 5. <laughs> nah, they're not trying to be like the Jacksons. If I just listened to hip hop, I wouldn't have half of this shit. You know what I mean? If I just listened to jazz, I wouldn't have half of this shit. Just being into records and being into music so much, I want to experience what they listen to in Korea. You guys have shit that they try to sound like Jimi Hendrix and the Beatles? Where? Where? Really? Wow, can I hear that? My pops would like buy me records for like good grades or or moms would like buy me records or whatever. So they would buy me, I would either get their records that they already owned. That was, you know, like early R&B and Parliament and Diana Ross and that type of stuff I was getting. When I started buying records on my own, I was, um, I don't know, maybe 13, 14, something like that. I would sell now and laters. Like that was my first hustle. Like as a little kid, I would go to the store and buy like 10 cent packs and now, I don't even know why I even thought of doing this, but I would go there and then I would come to school and sell them for like a quarter a pop. Now there's my, you know, I'm coming up. More than 100% markup. So I used to just come up. That money would go towards records. My lunch money would go towards records. Like every Tuesday, I already, I had a whole thing mapped out. So I would be hungry for the rest of the week, but mom was already like, you don't need to buy new records. Like when I bought records home from school, I would come home literally, I would buy my records, brand new records, I would buy them that Tuesday and Thursday, mind you. And then I would open them, like go to like a little hidden spot on my bike, right behind Music Plus. I would open them and then I would just like, Damaged the cover a little bit so they didn't look brand new. Then I just go home, I'm like, what's up, mom? Nope, they're not new records. These are old. I borrowed them from my boy up the street, Paul. Because if I walked in with a Music Plus bag, like, like, what? The, where'd you get money from to buy records? Got the KPMs. Uh, these are like uh, London based UK library music, meaning uh, music that was made for a television show. So if I was doing an episode of Hawaii Five-0, I would grab one of these and listen to it and find something that fit that scene. And then I would just play this record and that's what these were made for. And they were very popular in the late 
80s, early 90s when digging was like the thing to do. Everybody was buying library records. Now, nobody's buying library records. Yeah, I don't think of it like that. Like, I must find that one record that it's elusive. What is that record at? I haven't seen it yet. Nah, Big Daddy Kane was like that. US promo only. Big Daddy Kane, 12 inch, very, very rare. Ain't no half stepping. And then Big Daddy Kane, part two, expensive 12 inches. Both like 200, 250s. For so I don't know why Big Daddy Kane records are expensive, but they are for these two. But I bought them. Well worth one of my favorite set of this song is one of my favorite Big Daddy Kane. I don't know if I would if I did have Bill Gates money, I'd probably my shit would be probably like 10 times as many more records and it would be stupid dumb. Like I'd have somebody here right now like put this away for me. Thank you. Yeah, like I'd have a dude here helping me like a record boy like, yeah, hey, there's the stack. Put these records away while you're here. Thanks, man. Ooh, another expensive Brazilian record right here. This is a thousand dollar record probably. If I was to buy it in the US. If I bought if I buy this in the US, this would probably be a good too much money record. This would be rent for a month for some people right here. I'll buy cheap records and then I'll like either look it up or somebody will come over and be like, yo man, that's a five hundred dollar record, man. What are you doing? Like Bought this for 10 bucks. What are you talking about? $500 record. True story, I saw a record in Japan, $50. It's like, no freaking way. I'm not buying that for 50 bucks. I want it, but I'm not going to. Came home, took DJ Scratch shopping. DJ Scratch, let's go record shopping, man. Yeah, okay. Took him to one of my spots. Records there for 99 cents. Exact same record, 99 cents. This record called the Russell Brothers. It's actually the original for, um, Time to get ill, BC boys. It's the beat, the do do ch do do, just like like the beat they scratch. And I never knew what the hell. Wolf actually hit me to it. Wolf's like, you don't have the Russell Brothers. When I go overseas, that's when my real digging experience occurs because I like foreign records more than U.S. records. These are just a couple of the super OG expensive ones. OG Disco 3000, the mother OG. I think they silk screen these ones themselves. And these ones are like two of the, this was 150 in Italian money. So I don't know what the f that was. They reissued them now, but this label is like a ridiculous dope, like jazz label. So this was another obsession like, oh, horror records. What can I find on that label? Nothing, because it's all in Italy. We went to this one place, me, Madlib, and Wolf. We just walked in, and the guy was like, hey, what do you guys want? What do we help you? And we're like, oh, we're here looking for, um, you know, you heard, you heard this place got a lot of records, blah, 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 blah. What do, what do you want? What groups? We're like, uh, I mean, there's no list for us, you know? We don't have a list, we just want to, but he was super like grouchy, wasn't even having it. And then Wolf finally like name dropped Jazzy Jeff and dude was like, oh, Jeff, yeah, come on in here, man, go ahead. And then like this dude's store is just nothing but 45. So it's like, he was like, oh, wow, paradise. So he's just like, just going crazy. And the funny thing was Madlib now is in the 45s, but then he wasn't in the 45s. And the dude's like album section was like, Nothing, but meanwhile, me and Wolf are like in the back, like sound like little kids, like woo, hey over here, woo, hey I found woo, hey man, what is that, woo, like everybody's just, he probably just heard that, and meanwhile, Madlib's like just in the front, like, F I don't buy 45s, like dude, you need to start, get back here. My favorite James Brown record that I own, damn, well, isn't James Brown, it's actually. JB's and it is not in here. Hold on. Yeah, it is. There we go. This is my favorite James Brown album. And just for the simple fact, it's promotion copy. On the promos, they have an extra, 
There's a bonus song. So like on the real ones, four, three. I don't know what it goes for now. I haven't, I don't see them. I never, I don't, you don't see these at all. I don't see them at all. So if you see this promo, get this. Uh, this is a, my record cleaner, my VPI. Very essential if you're, if you buy records. But yeah, this is how this works. Clamp my record on. I like to add a little pressure so I'll make sure my sh gets in the grooves. Then you reverse. Take that off and then. Voila, my record's clean. See, I have no problem buying dirty records or warped records because I have this to clean my records and I have this to de-warp my records. Oh, sh I got a record in there. You just put your record in there, see? Kind of de-warped it a little. It looked like this before. It's definitely better than what this one looks like. I love Rare Earth. Rare Earth is great. Rare Earth is like one of them. Man, wow, they got their own label too. Motown really liked, this is all going through my head as I dig. Motown really liked Rare Earth, didn't they? They sure did. They even gave them their own freaking label. So it became an obsession of mine to find everything that's on Rare Earth, the label, other than the group Rare Earth. More just rare earth groups. Toe fat too. Who? I'll take it. Don't judge me, please. We had to do it, my man. Mickey Mouse ears is donuts. I wear these on Dilla's uh, birthday and you know, when we do a little Dilla event. Oh man, I gotta get those too. So Mickey Mouse ears is a, uh, cookies and milk. I hope you still think I'm cool a little bit at least. This is a crate dig. I'm, I'm a crate digger nonstop over here. This is nonstop. I crate dig every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm out, J-Rock, Beat Junkie Crew, Stone Star representative always. Shout out to everybody that's taught me something about record shopping. And that's word.